wish you'd just kept this on going. I can preach any time, but you can't get something like this stirred up just there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Is that too much no. Matthew chapter 19. 27 verse. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all. And follow thee. What shall we have therefore? Jesus said to them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. For many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Twenty-seven through thirty, if correctly read out of the 19th chapter of the book of Matthew. You're fortunate to be here tonight. Because it's not often the Spirit of God moves through a whole congregation like it's moved through. And it's just a blessing to be here. May we pray. Our Father tonight, we're keenly, keenly conscious of the responsibility that hangs on us. We pray that you'll take thy servant, loose his tongue, illuminate his mind, and give him holy unction. Thank you for what already has transpired. And we pray, Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus now, that you'll bless every one of these preachers that's here. May they go away refueled and refired and encouraged to go for God all the way. Then for the churches that are represented, we pray that the spirit of this meeting shall be carried to the different churches and shall bring about such rejoicing in the people of God that they too shall have experiences like we've been privileged to have tonight. And oh God, how we pray tonight for this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Over the book of Psalms, the psalmist said, Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Amen. Everyday language, Will thou not revive thy people, that they may be a spiritual stampede? Amen. And that's the need of our churches. That there might be such a spiritual stampede that people won't talk about anything except God. Tonight, I want to talk to you about this verse. Peter said unto him, Behold, we forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? They're just facing the fact that many have turned away and gone back. Because of that which he's told them. And they said that's hard doctrine. We can't stand it. And the many of the disciples went the other way. Jesus said, you want to go away too? Peter said, Thou hast the words of eternal life. 
And they were facing many things, and then Peter asked a question, which is a simple question, which is a reasonable question. We've left all the folly. What are we going to get out of it? Isn't that human? Look, Lord, we've left everything to follow you. Now what are we going to get out of it? And as a result, my friends, I think it's a sensible question. I think it's a reasonable question. I don't think Peter was out of order when he asked it. So that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. What are we going to get out of it? You've left a lot of folks and lost a lot of supposedly friends and gone through with a lot of things because you gave it all up to follow Jesus. Now the question is, what are you going to get out of it? And that's the thing I want to try with the help of God to answer tonight. And here's what Jesus said. Jesus said to them, Verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in regeneration. First of all, we get regenerated. That's the first thing that takes place is regeneration. We are made new creatures. We've got a new nature put in us. That's the first thing. When you give up everything to follow Jesus, the first thing that happens is regeneration. You become a child of God. We're born into God's family. We become automatically an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. So as a result, that's the first thing you're going to get. He's going to quicken you. We are born of an imperishable seed. We're born of an incorruptible seed which liveth and abideth forever. And as a result, whatever God does is forever. You can't add anything to it. You can't take anything from it. And when you left all to follow Jesus, you just got you something you can't never get over. If you try it a thousand years, you won't be a bit less saved. If you try it another thousand, you wouldn't get a bit better saved. When He regenerates you, He gives you all. So far as salvation is concerned, you was born a perfect child of God. In other words, when God births you, it's a perfect birth. There's no blemishes, no imperfections. When he birthed you into the kingdom of God, it was a perfect birth. And there'll never be any blemishes in what God does. So that's the first thing we got. We got uh, regenerated, which means we got born into the family of God. We took an imperishable nature. And then we took on a new nature, which is his nature. To illustrate what I'm trying to say, down at the camp that I would try to operate down at Myrtle, we installed a hard company to install a dishwasher with a contract saying it'll be running by Monday. That's the Monday that the meeting was going to start. He came down on Saturday. He told me to have electricity wired, place wired with a switch for him to tie in. And he came down on Saturday morning early, set his dishwashing machine in, and tied it up, wired it and connected, and said, turn on the switch, we're ready to go. And I threw the switch, and that dishwasher got to bucking and rattling, and smoke come out of it until you couldn't see it. Looked like it was going to burn up before we get this. I threw the switch on, said, throw that switch. I said, I done throw it. Thing like to burn up. What's the matter with it? He said, I don't know. Wait till the smoke clears away. <laughs> we got down there, and he examined it. He said, what kind of current did you give me? I said, three phase. That's what you told me to wire it for. He said, oh, that's what's wrong. He said, this is a single phase motor. It can't take three phase. 
I said, now what we're going to do? He said, don't fuss at me. I'll get you a motor that'll take the three-phase current. He went to the phone and called around for about an hour. Come back and said, I can't find a three-phase motor in Memphis, Tupelo, nor New Orleans anywhere that'll fit this machine. And I said, now what? We got to have it Monday morning. We've done toward the old amount. He said, give me six hours, and I promise you, I'll have it going. I said, okay, you got the six hours, but you're going to have to get a crank before this day is gone. About five hours, he's back, put the motor on, said, throw the switch. I threw the switch, and it went to running smooth as a sewing machine. No bucking, no rattling of the bands or anything. I said, what'd you do? He said, I rewound it. The motor so it'd take three-phase current instead of single-phase. I said, any bands bad? said, it wasn't nothing bad. It didn't burn up nothing. Fortunately, it didn't hurt the battery. said, I just rewired it where it received the three-phase current instead of the single-phase. And it's ready to go, preacher. I said, thank you. I left the bill and walked up the walk to the house. It dawned on me that's what God did to you and me. We were single faces. And you remember when God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit started to convict of you? You bucked, you squalled, you shed tears, you fought, you rebelled, and you bucked and rattled and done everything else. But when He regenerated you, when He rewired you for three phase curve, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, you got going. Now that's the reason you enjoy it now. You're a three phase instead of a single phase. These folks sitting around here, single phase about to burn a bear now. That's what we get out of leaving all to follow Jesus. We get regenerated. We become three phases. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and the devil's disconnected. That's what we got out of it. Thank God. That's it, sister. Just help yourself. said something else. Uh, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration of the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of His glory. Ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that had forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. What is it? Jesus, he said, we've left all the for you. What are you going to get out of it? You're going to get regenerated. You're going to receive God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're going to be blessed there. And you've left all the follow, but you hadn't lost anything when you left your crowd to follow me. Because you're going to have a hundredfold of brothers and mothers and fathers and sisters and houses and lots and lands. And I want to testify that he'll keep his promise. He's done what he said he'd do. For example, when you left the devil's crowd... They turned on you and cussed you and persecuted you and made fun of you. You thought you was wrong. But look how many brothers and sisters you got now. Look how many friends you got now. And they're here to help you not to wreck you. That crowd you had was wreckers and destroyers and haters and killers and robbers and thieves and liars on you and made it rough on you and tried to defy you. But the crowd you got now loves you and prays for you and sings to you and blesses you, lifts you and helps you and secures you. 
That's the difference. We've left all the father. What are we going to get out of it? We're going to get the fathers and mothers and houses and lands and brothers and sisters. Hundredfold. Hundredfold. You pardon me, pardon me for a personal reference to show you what I'm talking about. When I surrendered to preach, I had a contract laying on my desk, not boasting about it, but for $500,000 for five years, and that is back in 32, and that is a tremendous amount of money, to go to Hollywood. I wrestled with it all night long. Because of the bright lights of Hollywood and because of the money, particularly because I'd been raised a poor boy. By daylight, I pushed the contract back and said, Lord God, I'll go preach. Amen. And my family said, get out. The neighbors sent telegrams of sympathy, cards of sympathy saying sympathizing with the family because the son had cracked up and gone to preaching. And I was driven from the home. No money, nowhere to go. The devil said, now nah, wasn't you a fool. You could live on easy street for the rest of your life and never want for nothing. Here you are, driven out, no place to lay your head, no place to spend the night. I said, okay, but I've done surrendered now, I came back on God. And I got out and started walking. I walked across the state line in Mississippi, walked on down through Tennessee, and come by an old abandoned one teacher schoolhouse, the windows knocked out. Door steps had brought me, rotted down, the doors was rotten on and falling off the hinges. Walked by that schoolhouse, just an old Bannon house on the side of the road in Apache Woods. And I said, Lord, you call me, and I'm going to get in there and preach. That's the first place I've seen I could preach, and it wouldn't get thrown out. I went in there and got the hooping and the hollering the best I could. A little bit I seen folks coming down the road, peeping behind trees, out behind trees. One who that fool was in there jumping and the hollering. One but a little while till they come and got in there to see what was going on. And the power of God came. And they went back and brought other loved ones. Soon the house is full. And when I got through, an old white headed Irishman come up and put his arm around and said, Son, go home and eat dinner with me today. He said, You tell them, come back here this scene, you talk to them again. He said, I'll feed you. I went home with him. Went back out in. Hounds and yard is full. And I preached what God gave me. He come and said, you go home with me tonight, can't you? You got anywhere to go? I said, no. Went home with him. Didn't have any children, he and his wife. We sat around an open fireplace. He sat there and tears started running over the cheeks and pressure away. Me and the old lady there have longed for a son. We never had one. God didn't see fit to give us one until today. But said, when I saw you today, I knew you was my son. Said, reckon your mom and daddy let us have you? I said, no, they won't. They can't because they done throw me away and told me not to come back there no more. And not let nobody know I was their son. I said, you already got me if you want me. He said, well, that's what I want. And he and, he and his wife got out and thank God I was there. Carried me across the hall and put me to bed. Called me the next morning. He said, here's the key to my car. You take it and drive around and visit these folks out John, on the farms and tell them about Jesus and read God's Word. Don't you come back till sundown. I got back about time the sun is going down. 
got out of the car and said, Come here, son. He had a house built in an L shape like this. He'd gone back in that L. Had a contracting company come out there and build a big bedroom all in one day. Seal it and everything. Carpet it. He had a furniture store to bring the furniture, the bedroom suit out there and put in it. He had a key to the door. He unlocked the door and said, Son, how you like that? Said, you got the key to the car, now you got the key to the room, and three times a day there'll be food on the table. And you just go tell everybody you want to about Jesus, and I'll take care of it. I want you to know God did what he said he'd do. He gave me a home. He gave me a mom and a papa. And... And since that time, all over this country, God's used me. And I've got homes all over this country where I can go right now and feel a lot more at home than I ever felt at my own home. A lot of godly men and godly women. Oh, they want me to come to their home. A lot of them who sit here tonight, fellas like Brother Poplin, and fellas like others like them, have said, my home's your home any time you want to come. There it is. And I know them in it. And I want you to know tonight, my friends, I want to testify that I've got hundreds of places where there's mamas and mothers for me. If I go tonight, ring the doorbell and knock on the door, they say, come on in, put you. your bed's ready. <laughs> Jesus will do what he said he'd do. And i got so many brothers and sisters, I can't even count them. I mean brothers and sisters that will do things for me that my brothers and sisters would never do. They didn't like what I was doing. But i got men and women all over this country, brothers and sisters, that help me when I need help. And I'd go to them before I'd go to some of my own kin folks. And then I've stood to see all of my own people buried. I've followed the last one to the grave. But it ain't worried me, because I won't ever get around to see all my brothers and sisters the Lord's give me. If I started tonight, I couldn't get around to see them all. So I just see them as I go by. I want you to know I want to stand and testify. He's done it. He's given me hundreds of brothers and sisters all over this country that they're as close to me or closer than my flesh, blood, and bone sisters and brothers were. I want you to know that tonight. And he'll do the same thing for you. A lot of times old brothers and sisters and mamas and papas won't understand you, but the old saintly godly men and women will mother you and father you and brother you and sister you. They sure will. Because Jesus said so. I see a lot, I've seen a lot of people go to hate me. They come to hear me, say, I don't like him, I hate him. For it's over with, they'll be loving me. They can't help themselves. You know why, Brother Horn? God makes them love me. There's a lot of folks don't want to love me. They don't like me. They don't want to love me. And they wind up just crazy about me. Because the Lord said He'd do it. And they can't help themselves when God works them up. He said He'd do it. What am I going to get out of leaving all and following Jesus? First, I get my regenerated. I get a new nature. I get the threefold spirit in me. And then I get a mother's and father's and brothers and sisters. And then he gives me a lot of little old children that love me. Somebody said not long ago, look at all them little old children around. They can't help themselves. The Lord said he'd give me children to love me and to bless my life. And he did it. I seen the brother, this elderly brother, hugging that little boy tonight. He couldn't help himself because that's the way God said he'd do it. I'm just testifying for Jesus tonight, yeah. all I'm doing. Just telling you, my friends, he'd do what he said he'd do. And I want you to realize that. And then I'd have you know something else. 
Something else, listen to this. I'll turn and read it to you so you know it's out of the book. Something else you got when you left all to follow Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Never shall be condemned. I was condemned one day. I was condemned. I was guilty. But when I left all to follow Jesus, He lived in the condemnation. I had never been condemned since and I never will be. There is no more condemnation. Never will be condemned again, Richard Horn. I've been con- I've got one of condemnation. When I received Jesus and left all the fallen, condemnation left. There's no condemnation now, there never will be. He took care of the whole judgment of God. I want you to realize, my friends, tonight, that's what you receive when you get saved. And then at the same time, sin robs. Sin brings famine. And leaves you sh- ruined. Hey, sin will carry you further than you want to go. And sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. And it will make you pay more than you want to pay. But when you leave all to follow Jesus, He won't carry you no further than you need to go. And He won't keep you no longer than you ought to stay. And my friends, I'd have you realize you won't be sorry that you paid that price to leave all to follow Him. Because He's got so much more than you had. It'll be okay. It won't cost you more than you want to pay. It'll just give you more than you can ever get through shouting over. That's what it means. Yes, I want you to know that's what you get when you leave everything to follow Jesus. And then, my friends, notice whatever he said. And he said something else. Those that are faithful over a few things, I'll make you rule over many things. And so as a result, when you leave all to follow Jesus, if you're just faithful over a few things, he's going to make you ruler over many things. And so let me say something to you, ladies and gentlemen, lads and lasses. Stay with Jesus. Leave all and follow Him. If you're faithful over the few things He gives you to do, He'll make you rule over many things. He gives you thrones that won't be torn out from under you. Won't you to see it tonight? In other words, the whole business is this. He'll give you more than you have. And those places, my friends, will never be taken away from you. For example, I read in my Bible where a man left, a king left his throne to chase a flea. And he chased it, but never did catch the flea. But while he was chasing the flea, the enemy got his throne. I read again where a king left his throne to hunt a dead dog. He found the dead dog, but nobody wanted the dog, but while he's hunting the dead dog, he lost his throne. Now let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, lads and lasses. Don't leave the position the Lord has placed you in when you left all to follow Him, uh, trying to chase some hopping flea or hunt some dead dog. I'll find who told that lie. I'll find who lied on me. I'll find who done that. No, you won't. You'll lose your throne chasing fleas and hunting dead dogs. You don't have to hunt dead dogs. Who wants dead dogs? Stay on the throne. Stay where the Lord puts you when you left all to follow Him. Don't go hunting dead dogs the devil's laid out there. Don't go chase after fleas that the devil put out there. Just stay with the throne that he put you on. We stop to recognize he's promised some thrones. I just mention them. First of all, my friends, a place to reign. Listen, in the book of Second Timothy, 
we have these words. Second Timothy 2 and 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. My friends, he said, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And if you're not suffering persecution, pretty good sign you're backslid. But just remember, when you're suffering persecution for living godly in Christ Jesus, you have left all to follow the devil's crowd to try to get you to come back with them, and they're persecuting you. Just shout and say, well, bless God, I'm going to reign with them too. I've not only left you and your crowd to follow, but I'm going to reign with them one of these days. So you just persecute and cuss and buck and fight all you want to, and be mean to me all you want to, I'm headed to the throne of reign. And then also, my friends, not only be a place that will reign, but I'd have you realize it'll be a crown that fades not away. Second Timothy also tells us, my friends, the fourth chapter I'm, and uh, second verse, eighth verse it is. Here it is. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me today, not to me only, but all, unto all them also that love us appear. He'll give us a righteous crown, a crown of righteousness. And if it's righteous, it can never decay, it can never rot. There's nothing imperfect about it to run it. So it gives you a crown of righteousness that fades not away. Then it gives you a crown of life. James, the first chapter, and the uh, uh, twelfth verse, you find these words. Blessed is the man that endured temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Crown of life. No death but a life crown that will make you live forever and ever and ever, where no death will come where no death will take place. And also in Revelation, the second chapter and the tenth verse, these words declared also. Second chapter and tenth verse. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee the crown of life. Devil can't kill you. Devil can't destroy your life. It's a crown of life he's going to give us. Even though we suffer and go through it a lot, we got a crown of life the devil can't take off on us. He can't. And then also, my friends, I'd have to realize a crown of glory. He tells us in the book of Peter that we'll have a crown of glory. Also, 1 Peter 5 and 4. The fifth chapter and the fourth verse. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. We're going to get a crown of righteousness. We're going to get a crown of life. We're going to get a crown of glory. And then we're going to get an incorruptible crown that won't never corrupt. According to First Corinthians 9.25, it gives us a crown that will never corrupt. That means a crown that will never fade. Hey, hey, Lord, we've left all the folly. What are we going to get out of it? Going to get regenerated? Going to get more mamas and papas? Going to get more houses to stay in? My friends, you, the old psalmist said, once I was young, now I'm old, and I've never seen the seed of the righteous begging bread anywhere. That means, my friends, God will see to it that you have a house. He said, seek ye first the king of God. Don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, where you're going to stay. Just put me first and come out all the way. Leave everything to follow me. And I'll see that you have something to eat and something to wear and somewhere to stay. And that's assurance, insurance against pauperism right quick. So, my friends, when I left all to follow Jesus... I got insurance and assurance against pauperism. I'll never have to beg. I'll never be left outside. I'll have some beef. If he has to rain man and down out of heaven and send birds in my yard, he'd done it before. 
If he has to make my shoes last 40 years, my clothes last 40 years, he's done it before. We left all of follow you. What are we going to get out of it, Lord? It is. I want you to realize then, my friends, the treasures in him where thieves cannot steal, rust cannot corrupt, and moths can't eat. When I left all the fallen, he gave me a treasure place in him where I can store up treasures that I'll need forever and ever. And dirty thieves will not rob me. Moths will not eat it and rust will not corrupt it. Neither will it your treasure. When we left all the fallen, he turned the treasure in him over to us to put our uh, treasures in. And the thieves will never break in. Cause nothing to defile it to make it the lies shall enter therein. And the moths will not be around that eat on it. And rust will not corrode it. And you got your treasures forever. Hundredfold treasures. And my friends, I'd have you realize something else. When I was born into the family of God, that made me an heir of God. And a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I don't know what all God's got. My little peanut brain won't figure it. But I know one thing, I'm going to inherit part of it. And I'm going to be a joint heir with Jesus and inherit like He, because I'm a son of God. God's my Father. And as a result, I've left all the following you. Jesus, what are you going to get out of it? You've got my Father to be your Father. You've got the privilege as a child to go in and talk to my Father and get what you need. That's what you got. Oh, my friends. I have left all to follow Jesus. What are you going to get out of it, Peter said? We're going to get, my friends, uh, something else. We're going to get the, the fact that Jesus said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. The mother may forget the suckling of a breast. Brothers and sisters may leave you, but I'll never forsake you and I'll never leave you. i got the assurance, my friends, that he'll be with me all the way. So I got him to be with me all the way. Not, not only that, but I got him to go into the Father and plead my petitions. So as a result, I've left all the Father Jesus. Where are you going to get out of it? I got the forgiveness of my sin according to the riches of his grace. Not out of his riches, but according. That means as long as he's got in his grace, I've got riches. And the forgiveness of sin. And I want you to realize tonight, my friends, not all of that, but there's coming a time when I got something else. Amen. And when I left all to follow Jesus, he said, that's okay. He said, I'll not ever let you be tempted with any kind of temptation with which is common to man. And with every temptation, I'll make a way of escape. And I will not let you to be attentive above that what you're able to stand. And so I say to you tonight, when I left everything to follow Jesus, I got a loose from the shackles and the habits and the curse of sin. He's made it possible that every temptation's come my way. I've been able to stand it and been able to bear it. And as a result, I've been not been drugged down by the devil and his crowd like I used to be. He don't let the tempter come, but what he makes it possible for me to be able to stand it. That's what you get by following Jesus. That's what you get by living for Jesus. I want you to realize it tonight. What else we're going to get by leaving everything to follow Jesus? I'll tell you what you're going to get, my friends. You're going to get rewards. I'll reward you for everything you've ever done for me. Give a cup of cold water in my hand, you'll get a reward. To do anything for me, I'll pay you. And what we're going to get for following Jesus, leaving everything, I'll tell you what we're going to get. We're going to get the privileges. He said the Son of Man will come in the glory of His Father, the holy angels, and then every man shall be rewarded according to His works. What are we going to get? I'll tell you what we're going to get the angels. God's going to bring God's payroll. And they're going to open up the checkbook and pay us for everything we've ever done since we got saved. 
The devil don't do nothing but rob you and steal and cheat and swindle. Leave you a pauper. And when you leave all to follow Jesus, he's keeping a record of every little act you do for him. And he's going to send the angels and they'll pay you when the whistle blows. You see, after all, you don't get paid till the whistle blows where you're working. But when the whistle blows, it's the fact you go by to the payroll man. Jesus said, when the trumpet sound, I'll be there. And the angels will be with me. They'll bring the payroll. And they'll pay every one of us off according to the way we serve God. You're not going to lose nothing but following Jesus. Pay your hundredfold. Pay your hundredfold. Then, my friends, along with that, I want you to realize he's broke and saved me from all the habits and the shackles and the blight and the curse of sin. Then he sent angels to minister to me when I needed them. Angels. Angels. They stand beholding the face of God the Father day and night. What for? When Richard Horn needs one, there he is. When Arthur Blackman needs one, there he is. And he goes back as soon as he gets two minutes and beholds the face waiting for the orders from God. God created the angels to minister to his young ones. And the angels of God look after me, look after you while we sleep, while we travel, while we live. The angels of God are ministering to me. All oh, my friends, they help me through the hours of danger. They help me through the hours of need. The ministering of God's angels is a tremendous thing to the saint of God. We're God's children. Therefore, we've got God's servants, the angels, to look after us, to minister to us. That's what you get by leaving everything to follow God. He turns His angels loose to minister to you, to take care of you, to meet your needs, to protect you and your young ones, and your home and your family from the devil. Then, my friends, I left all to follow thee. What are you going to get out of it, God? Going to get the saints of God praying for me. Money can't buy that. Pardon me. One night I was driving back in South Carolina in a meeting two o'clock in the morning over in Georgia. I had the terriblest temptation and it would have sunk me for good and hurt God's ministry. So far as I'm concerned, permanently I'd have been out of the picture. And it looked like there wasn't no way around. But all of a sudden just everything cleared. No more temptation. I went on my way. A couple of weeks later, one of the old godly sisters in our church that never says anything but prays all the time, come and said, Preacher, I want to ask you something. I said, Okay. I said, What is the matter? You two o'clock Thursday morning, two weeks ago. I said, God woke me up. And I got out of my bed and got out on my knees and said, uh-uh, get on your face, child. This is serious. And he said, I got on my face and soon there's a puddle of tears on the floor. Then God spoke and said, get up and go back to bed. It's okay now. Ah, that kind of help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That help ain't for sale. But when I left all apologies, I got the saints all over this country praying for me. Arthur Blackman, that's the reason you are chill around. Nothing else is keeping you here to pray for me, because I know you do. Oh, just think of that. I wouldn't do that. If I didn't get nothing else out of leaving everything to follow Jesus, just the prayers of the saints of God all over this country, is a plenty for me. Hundredfold. Not just one or two, but glory to God, a hundredfold. Then, my friends, what else is going to get out of it? We left all of you. Jesus said, We should not get up here yet. What's 
you be like. But when I tell you, be like me. Yeah. Woo! I'm going to give you this to you like the Son of God. Yeah. When you think all the power, all the glory, all the blessings the Son of God has been, Lord, I'm going to get to be like Him. Like Him. Like Him. Like Him. That's what you get for following Jesus. I've left all for you. What are we going to get out of it, Lord? What are we going to get out of it? Persecution a hundredfold. But it don't hurt. It just helps you on. Spurs you on. Left all the folly. What are we going to get out of it, Lord? Here it is. Listen to it now. I left all for you. What am I going to get out of it? Don't let your heart be in trouble. You believe in sin, believe also in God. In my Father's hounds are many mansions. And if you believe in me, I'll prepare one for you. What am I going to get out of it? I'm going to get a mansion in God's world. Permanent home. Home sweet home. Where we won't have to roam no more. Home where there ain't no death angels. Home where there ain't no diseases. Home where there ain't no devils. Home where there ain't no sickness. Home. Home. Eternal home. Everlasting home. Home forever and ever and ever. He said it wasn't so out of card. I'd have told you so. It's so. It's so. Home forever. Home forever. Where God is. Where Jesus is. Where the angels are. Home. Sweet home. 